Welcome to On The Move. Good morning. Uh, as I was introduced before, my name is Spencer Freeman. I represent uh, Mac Worley and uh, also co-counsel Robert Apgood. Uh, <coughs> the uh, process voir dire, which is what we're doing right now, the term voir dire technically is translated as see, say. And what we practically translate it as, or more figuratively translate it as, is to speak the truth. So just cards on the table, we're trying to ask you guys questions to see if you'll reveal some truth about yourself that may make us comfortable or not comfortable with you sitting on a jury for our respective cases. So um, although we don't necessarily want to put you on the spot, we're kind of putting you on, putting you on the spot. Um, that said, I want to talk, kind of start off where the city just left. Uh, this case is about uh, a gun. and so. Your, your belief about gun rights is going to be really important. Uh, anybody follow the news? What goes on with gun rights in the news? Yeah? Oh, you're shaking your head. Yes. <laughs> uh, what, news, uh, what news have you watched? Oh, just uh, <clears throat> the shootings in the schools. Okay. And uh, what we should do about assault rifles. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Um, what do you think we should do about assault rifles? I don't know that the average person should have access to them. So uh, I believe in all other guns. I just wonder why people feel that they have to have those. What, what's to an protect, assault rifle? Uh, to me, something, uh, a large carbine or something that can shoot rapid fire a lot of bullets at once. Okay. Yeah. So anybody else have a different belief of what an assault rifle is, the rapid firing of bullets? Anybody else have a different belief? Anybody else agree? And I'm Ms. Shoemaker. She is a shoemaker. Uh -huh. uh, anybody else agree with Ms. Shoemaker that uh, people should not have assault rifles? Is that the actual definition? If given that definition, oh. given that definition, we'll work with that definition. And yes, I <laughs> think that's the right definition. Um, does anybody believe that people shouldn't have semi-automatic rifles? Okay, these two here. And what do you think a semi-automatic rifle is? It's too harmful, you know, only professional can take it. I, that's my belief. Okay, yeah. and how about you? What do you believe a semi-automatic semi rifle is? It's uh, a lot of bullets that can go off at once on a gun. A lot of bullets that can go off at once right. rapid? Yeah, basically rapid fire, it, you know, it's semi-automatic. Okay, so you think It's not for hunting, you know, you don't use semi-automatics for hunting. You don't? I don't think do you know anybody that hunts? Um, yes, I do. Does anybody agree with that about using a semi-automatic? Who, who thinks you use a semi-automatic oh, rifle I for hunting? Do. Okay. Do. Are you a hunter? Archery hunter. Archery? Now that's not semi-automatic, is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. Vegas, yeah. uh, you're a hunter? Oh, used to be. Okay. And you use semi-automatic? I have. Uh, yeah. You have? Okay, is that a common thing? What a semi-automatic uh, rifle for hunting? Yeah. What's, sure is. You've used one then. Right. What's your understanding of what semi-automatic means? One pull, one shot. Okay. You can success, uh, succession, you know, fire for every time you pull the trigger, you're, you're shooting projectile. Uh, do you have an understanding of handguns? Yeah. And is that uh, the same or different from standard handguns that police officers carry. The same. So who else had this understanding about a semi-automatic rifle being a rapid fire rifle? Who else believed that? Yeah? It seems to be kind of a, a, a normal presumption or belief, at least by news reports. Is that fair? If you're presented evidence, and I'll ask you, if you're presented evidence in this trial, that that is not what a semi-automatic weapon is. Are you willing to accept that? Yes. Okay. <coughs> so if we go off Mr. Fakus's, Fakus's, I don't want to mispronounce your name, um, definition of what a semi-automatic weapon is, one pull, one bullet. Fair, what you said? Right. Uh, does anybody believe that citizens should not be able to possess a semi-automatic weapon? Ill, I mean, uh, 
Okay. The history of that, I don't think they should have one. There might be some limited circumstances where people shouldn't be allowed to have one of those things. They maybe demonstrated the lack of ability to be responsible. Uh, which brings up a question. And Mr. Lane, I think you had said you have zero tolerance with people who are careless with weapons. Can you expand on that? What do you mean? Just not all of us, especially like concealed weapons. If anybody sees it, you're irresponsible. So, I mean, I've had a gun pulled on me that's had a concealed weapon, and that was just a bad idea. But anyway, it's a different story, but I just, that's no good. So it's, and I want to make sure I understand, it's careless to you if somebody with a concealed weapon like, I believe if you have a weapon that's concealed, no one ever should see that weapon. And if it ever comes out, it's because there's something happening where you have to take somebody down, and that's it. Okay. There's no other situation. Who agrees with that? Who think that's fair? You're shaking your head now. I, I, no, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that. Yeah, that's fair. Fair answer. I don't know. Um, Sorry. No, no, don't, don't be. I think that that's really fair. I mean, th this, let's face it, this a gun issue can be a tough issue, which is why we're, we need to talk about it. Um, let's talk about open carry. What do you think about open carry? Fine, but it's a little ridiculous with a little the extent of where people take it. You know? Okay. What do you mean by that? Well, just like uh, in Montana, it was okay when I was up there. You, know, you could carry a weapon, but you know, somebody that was 18 was like, well, I can carry a weapon, so let's carry a shotgun down the road. It's a little, a little ridiculous for the area you're in. I mean, it should be appropriate for what you're doing. Okay. So, um, going off your term ridiculous, do you think it should be illegal? No, see, that's hard because I don't want to punish anybody who's actually responsible. It's just, okay. I think we need mental testing before you buy a gun. Okay. Um, but you accept today and you don't. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> what, um, anybody following the news stories in Texas and what's going on at some of the Target stores down there? Yeah? Can you explain to us a little bit about what's going on? Well, I don't know about Target, but I know it was Starbucks that they were on Target to, I guess, that they had decided they were going to show that they could legally carry them, and they gathered together in like a big group and went into the store, right? Is that yeah. what you're talking about? Yeah. They did it. Starbucks, Chili, Staples. What do you think about that? I think that if I were in a Target with my kids and of 30 people walking with guns, I wouldn't know if they were going to shoot at us or if they were performing, you know, they're showing their rights. So I, I think if you're going into a public place where there's families and things, that it's really irresponsible to just walk in with a gun. Okay. Um, do you think, and if uh, those particular scenarios, Starbucks then banned any weapons in their store? Starbucks did, yeah. Right. Um, so is it, your opinion, would it be the onus of the law to prevent people from entering those types of establishments or the onus of policies of the establishment? I think that the establishments taking the steps is a good a good thing because it's their business and they have the right to say what their values are. I don't think the law is going to actually <coughs> do that. Do you think it should? I mean, it depends if it was a, like an outdoor store or something and somebody walked in with a gun. Be different than a Starbucks, okay. you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so maybe. All right. I don't know. Uh, what about concealed weapon in the in a in a store? I I mean if I didn't see the weapon, I don't know how I'd be upset about it. But I don't know. I haven't really thought about that. Okay. But how about dangerousness level to society? Because that's really what this is all about, right? What's dangerous and what's not dangerous? Is that fair? When we're talking about in stores? Possessing a gun. It's more about how people perceive it, is it not? Okay. No, I'm asking you. Um, yeah. You don't have to answer these questions. I, I get a track record. I ask questions. <laughs> I mean, you do believe I have certain thoughts about it. Yeah. Um, you're shaking your head. What, what do you think? About which exactly? The, the <laughs> um, part of it. I get very uneasy uh, around guns. If, if, if I thought a police officer has a gun, that's a good thing. Anybody else around me, I don't know. Okay. I've, I've changed over the last few years. And yeah, why is that? Because okay. of all the stuff that goes on, and and people don't get mental checks before they're given these guns. Okay. Do you believe in the Second Amendment right to bear arms? Yes, I do. Okay. But it sounds like somewhat in limited fashion. Limited now, yeah. Yeah? 
Who else uh, would agree with that statement? You're shaking your head, so I'm going to ask that, that it should be a limited right. Unlimited? Okay. Unlimited? That it should be a limited right. <laughs> yeah, it's a, thank you for clarifying. <laughs> Running my words together, we might misunderstand each other. Okay, and who thinks that it should be an unlimited right? The opposite. I have mixed feelings. Yeah, well, tell us. Well, I think that the reason that our forefathers put it in, in our Constitution was so that we could stand against our government. Um, I, and I don't... It's kind of like being a nice person. If I'm a nice person, I don't have to tell people I am. I show it. If I have a gun, I don't need to wave it around to say I have a gun. I, does but if that it's make just sense? on you and people can see that. Well, you know, I come from a family of hunters and we all, well, except for me, all have concealed weapons and you never see them because that's not the point of having a concealed weapon. It's for protection, not for show. Okay. It has a purpose. I don't know. So what do you think about open carry? If I'm going hunting. Okay. What about just But I'm I'm carry? always going to have one in my home and you know, automatic, semi automatic, I don't know. I want to be able to defend myself. Yeah. Um do you think that it should be criminal to open carry? I think there should be background checks that are a lot better than what they are. Okay, fair enough. Um, can I'm going to ask you, and your last name is Leitner, so Ms. Leitner, um, understanding some of your viewpoints and maybe some are unclear, if you were instructed by the judge uh, in this case that it's not illegal to open carry, can you apply that? Okay, Mr. Chai, how about you? Could you apply the law? Yeah, if that's the law, yes. Okay, because it sounds like you think maybe it should be illegal to open carry. Right. Which is which is fair. I don't. I'm not mm -hmm. making comment of it. Right. But yeah. if you're told that the law is otherwise, can you apply the law? Sure. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Middleton, how about you? Yes. You think uh, open carry should be uh, legal or illegal? Um, depends on the setting. Yeah, rural settings, it's part of the culture. Okay. Urban setting, I don't think so. It's so you think that anytime someone carries an open carry weapon in an urban setting, uh, it uh, should be illegal? Uh, I, I think I would, yeah. Okay. And if the judge told you, uh, and I'm going get it, the judge told you the law is otherwise, could you fairly apply that law even though you think it shouldn't be that way? Yes. Okay, Mr. Fakus? Is it not the current law that open carry is legal? <laughs> I don't think anybody wants me to tell you what my assessment of what the current law is. You know, at the end of the case, the court will, the, the court will instruct you. Um, and, and really what my question really goes to is, given your everybody's personal beliefs, can they apply the law that maybe not be consistent with their personal beliefs? How about, how about you? Could you do that? I'm not sure. That's fair. Um, you can understand. Changing. Everything's changing. It's, it makes my head spin. Yeah. In society, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Hard to know which, which direction is the right direction at this point, right? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Um, so you can understand that, that my client, Mr. Worley, would want to have somebody that could fairly apply the law. Right? Do you think you could fairly apply the law even if it went against your your beliefs about guns? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you were Mr. Worley, would you be comfortable with you as a juror on his case? And I want to say it, it's okay to say no to that question. Mm -hmm. We're human beings. I'm not. This is not making somebody right, wrong, bad, right. We're human beings. Let's just be honest about. It. Maybe you can't, and that's fine. If it was me. Maybe not. Maybe not? Okay. Ms. Ms. Leitner, how about you? Would you be comfortable if you were Mr. Worley with you on the jury? Okay. Is there anybody here who thinks that they could not fairly apply the, the laws that pertains to open carry because of their personal beliefs about guns? 
<laughs> no, I would totally, I would totally go by the law. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that once court's over, I'm not going to go out and fight for something else. Okay. Yeah. I would change. Just, yeah. Me on the fence. Yeah. I've got all kinds of things, guns and right and wrong, and I don't know. I just, it's the law, but then there's. Yeah. I'm just not sure. Who thinks this is a tough issue? Every, almost everybody. Who thinks this is a really easy issue? You I don't think, think it's our, easy? no. I just don't think our job in here is to interpret the law as long as the law, right? If we want to go outside here and then go fight for different rights, then we can do that. But I mean, we're not making laws in here, right? <laughs> right. So, right. Right. Seems kind of. Uh, five minutes. Thank you, Your Honor. You uh, are an educator. You're a teacher. And what grade do you teach? I'm a substitute at K through 12. Okay. Um, your experience as a teacher, does that change your views of gun rights at all? I don't want students bringing them to school and shooting me, if that's what you're asking. Okay, <laughs> um, I think that's fair. Uh, but sometimes that can lead over into the belief that uh, there shouldn't be access to guns at all. I'm on the call. Okay. Here locally? Clackamas. Clackamas? Still or was? Was. Okay. Retired 15 years ago. Okay. Who else has uh, family members that are in law enforcement? Or were. Was or were, yeah. And how, how about, what's the relationship? My mom. Your mom? And she was a police officer? Um, she, yes. Where at? She was also a dispatcher. In Las Vegas, she was a dispatcher. In Vernonia. Okay. Oregon, she was on the police force. Okay. How about you? Yeah. Aunts and uncles in Port Angeles. Police officers? Okay. Uh, detention officer, uh, my ex-husband. Your ex-husband? And where at? Uh, here in Clark County. Okay. Um, is he still? No, retired. Who else has had their hand up about family relations? What's the relationship? The there? brother-in-law, Clark County Sheriff deputy for 30, 35 years. But no longer? He passed away. Okay. Anybody who had their uh, hand up about family relations and law enforcement think that their discussions with their relative uh, would have any effect on their ability to listen to a criminal trial? Nobody had heard their husband or whatever say if they're charged they must be guilty? Every case is different. So let's talk about that comment though. Uh, how many people think that because Mr. Worley is charged with a crime that he's guilty of a crime? How many think that because he's charged with a crime, something bad must have happened? You find bad. <laughs> I'll leave that up to I you. I like having her here. <laughs> something happened? Well, something happened, obviously. People don't just, you know, end up here because they wandered in off the street. But, it, I mean, who knows what happened? You haven't told us yet. I know because I'm not allowed to. I will. I promise. Uh, what does it mean to you that he sits... Uh, as he sits here, he remains innocent. What do you mean? What do you mean to me? Well, the... As far as I know, he's innocent. He hasn't, he's not told me anything otherwise. You don't have any perception about who he is as a person based off the fact that he's sitting here facing trial? No, not really. Okay. Anybody? <laughs> um, so when you guys found out the seats that you're sitting in, the, the folks over here are likely going to be on the panel, the folks over here, probably not. Who was disappointed when they heard the news of where they were sitting? <laughs> that's, that's honest. I mean, for my position, I'd love to be on a jury, and I know it'll never happen. Uh, but everybody's different. So you've got stuff going on in your life. Yeah, it sounds like it's just a horrible moment. So. Okay. Do you mind sharing with us why it's just the worst time that ever? Uh, the only one in Vancouver for my job that does escalations for all 180,000 of us that are here. Um, I'm also covering my supervisor who's been gone for a month, and that's my point to show what I have so I can move on because I support a family of five by myself. So, and today wow, I've got a lot of day for some stuff. So, Okay, uh, what do you mean uh, escalations? I don't know what that is. So, I don't really want to say the company I'm with, but okay. it's a cable company, so that's probably the only one here. But uh, anything basically that goes wrong from our upper management, I get things from Philadelphia corporate. Anybody who's not happy in Vancouver, I'm the one that takes care of that. Okay. If it personally goes out there or not. So, 
basically as we sit, my inbox fills up as well, people wondering where I am, why I'm not fixing things. So. Yeah, so um, what's that? Anybody want to talk to you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> problem? Yeah. I'm on trial. It might not be a good idea for you to be in the deliberations room, but the subject might change. Yeah. Um, the month that your boss is gone yeah. is where are you at in that month? We are, we got about two weeks to the end of it. So. Okay, so you're in the middle of that, of yeah. that time period. Yeah. Um, do you think that your attention would be distracted? Uh, from listening to evidence, we'll, we may go into tomorrow. I don't imagine we'll go past tomorrow um, if it needed you know, tomorrow. But do you think your attention is going to be Honestly, distracted? Honestly, I'm listening and I'm hearing everything, but in the back of my head, I'm working on about 10 different projects. And okay. Uh, Your Honor, I would, I would ask you to excuse Mr. Lane for, for cause. Yeah. Again, Mr. Lane, you've made arrangements to be here today and put it yeah. on that. So if the, and again, I'm not saying the trial will con conclude today, I'm not permitted to give. The attorneys can give a, uh, what they think when they think that the uh, trial will finish, but I'm not allowed to. The uh, so as far as at, at work, you would be able if called and you did take an oath to uh, serve as a juror today. Do you think you would be able to live up to that oath? And if I had to do it, I would. It would just uh, means I get to do some start over and get behind. And okay. it thank would you. Be stressful. Yeah. Uh, then I. Thank you, uh, Miss Mitchell. You said this was, you were not happy about where you found out what your sheet meant. <laughs> I don't like being the center of attention, so this is really hard for me. Oh, you don't like being the center of attention? No, I don't like So my keeping to talk to you is not good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so who else has that same kind of belief that they don't like being the center of attention? Um, who has a problem with standing up for what they believe in? Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're in the jury room deliberating, and all the other people in the jury room disagree with you. Are you going to be able to stand firm with what you believe? Yes. Anybody think that they might fall into some peer pressure and, and be convinced otherwise? Okay. Maybe? Maybe. Yeah? Maybe. You, you might be as well? Yeah. Okay. Anybody see uh, 12 Angry Men? Oh, it's a fabulous movie. movie. Right? <laughs> yeah, could you find see yourself being a juror in there? Yeah, in that sweat box, yeah. Yeah? Okay. <clears throat> right, thank you, I think for... I'll be entertained right now, officer. Let me see your ID. No, thank you. What's that? No, thank you. No, thank you? No, thank you. Okay, why are you saying no, thank you? I, I know it's my Fourth Amendment right. I don't have to show you my identification. And one of these books that I want to discuss is this book right here, it's called Founding Brothers. It's written by Joseph J. Ellis, and I really found this book to be really informative. It helped me out a great deal in understanding uh, the founding of this. It's really comfortable, too. That's one thing I really like about this bag is the comfort level of it. Um, but anyway, so let me move on here, and we'll start showing the back here, show the features. Uh, first thing first here, we got the front of it. 